Good evening, world. Welcome to our service of healing and wholeness. We're so glad to have you all with us, especially in such a time as this. And so to begin our time, it will be an invitation for you to come as you are, to create, to be, to rest. You're invited to take a break from all the busyness that you have going on. And so with that, let us begin our first movement out of three, letting go of ordinary rhythms and cultivating the right now, being present here in this moment. And hear these words from the book of Isaiah, thus says the Lord, do not remember the former things or the prior things. Don't ponder ancient history. Look, I'm doing a new thing. Now it sprouts up, don't you recognize it? I'm making a new way in the desert, paths in the wilderness. Oh 
And welcome. We invite you to be, be in a place of stillness, be in a place of introspection, be in a place of calm. And our time today is going to be uh, multifaceted. So we'll have a rhythm of music, have the rhythm of word, of hearing the word of God in creative and unique ways. And, um, and this will be divided into three movements. So you are invited to grab some art supplies, um, grab some journaling um, paper and grab what is needed for you to be in a place of calm, be in a place of presence and be in a place of ready to receive and recharge. So welcome, come as you are. And now here's our one and all. Gather, Gather us, us in. in. The lost and the lonely. Gather, Gather us, us in. in. The seeking and doubting. Gather, Gather us, us in. in. For healing, for hope, for new life, we pray. Gather, Gather us in. in. Be still and know I am God. Be still and know I am. Be still and Be still, be. God, here and now, we know that you are here, but too often we fail to see you. Too often in times of pain, we choose to numb, distract, or ignore our hurt rather than bring it to you. Forgive us for the times we choose busyness over Sabbath and suppression over healing. Steal our minds and strengthen our hearts so that we might be able to see and know you better. Gratefully, we pray, amen. And now beloved community, Continuing in our movement one of letting go of ordinary rhythms and cultivating the now, we invite you to listen to the gospel according to Matthew, the 11th chapter, verse 28 through 30. And before we do that, I invite you to just pause for a sec and to take a breath in and a breath out focusing and centering on our breath. Breathe in and breathe out. And beloved community, from this centered space, I invite you 
to hear the words from Matthew with a fresh ears, a creative reading of this gospel. Come. Come. Come to me. Come to me. All you who are weary and burdened. All who are weary. All who are burdened. God, we are weary. God, we are burdened. So come. Come to me. Come to me. Come and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Learn from this. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Learn from this. Learn from love. Take my yoke upon you, for I am gentle and humble in heart. God, we are weary. I am gentle. God, we are burdened. I am humble in heart. Take my yoke upon you, and you will find rest for your souls. I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Rest for your souls. Rest for your bones. Rest for your wandering mind and your broken heart. I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God, we are weary. My burden is light. God, we are broken. You will find rest. Come. Come. Come to me. I am gentle. I am here. And you will find rest. And now let us cultivate holy space. This is where you all are invited to create. You're invited to get out paper and artistically express yourself while thinking about these questions. What burdens are you carrying? What truths would you like to share with God? What are your prayers for this evening or this season or this time in your life? And I invite you to be. When it feels like you can't do anything right And you would cut your hand off just to spite your face When all you know is everything's gone wrong You try to keep your head up, you're fighting to exist Come over here, child, come on to me, come on back now, baby, come home to me. When you hold out just to watch it burn down, and everything is ash now, dust to dust.
And then they just lay down and died. Come over here, child. Come home to me. Come on back now, baby. Come home. My friends, welcome to Movement 2. <laughs> Movement 2 is about letting go of fear and cultivating the confidence in God. You know, us as human beings, we're afraid of what we don't know. And, and when we feel like we're not in control of things that are happening in our lives or decisions that are made. And... And at those particular times, we're invited to, what does it look like in a real tangible way of cultivating that confidence in God? I can, uh, I can remember several times and several examples in many folks' lives of having to make really, really hard decisions of, of, do my parents that are aging, is it time for them to consider not living on their own anymore? Um, maybe others that are dealing with children and what does it look like as they're growing up in a world that is so broken, how to cultivate that confidence in God, although there is so much in the world to be fearful of. And my friends, we're invited to what does it look like to just lean in just for a moment to lean in and to be reminded that not only we're not alone of course but also to be reminded that it's okay to not have it all figured out it's okay to have to pivot at the last moment when things just are what they are and what a blessing that I believe that people are in our lives for a reason. And I believe that we have opportunities that are presented in front of us, opportunities to pivot and reframe or opportunities to um, suffer. And I know, of course, there are many, many, many examples of how this idea can be challenged. And yet, it gives me peace to know that I don't have to have everything figured out. And it gives me peace to know that God is real, God is here, and today is a day, a new day. And we can learn from yesterday. And today is a new day. So family of faith, beloved people of God, our world is full of big, big problems. And so people having big diagnoses, illnesses, um, questions of safety, catastrophic grief, fights, and the list goes on and on and on and on and on. And fortunately for us, we worship a God that is even bigger than we could ever imagine. So we're invited at this point in this moment in our service, we're invited to lay down our burdens before God and cultivate the confidence that God is present no matter what may come. So now hear the words from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah. 
Now, God, who created you says, Do not fear. Do not fear. Do not fear. Do not fear. For I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. So do not fear. God says, You are mine. And God says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you wade through the rivers, I will be with you. And when you walk through the fire, I will be with you. They will not drown you. They will not burn you. I will be with you. For you are mine. So do not fear. You are precious in my sight. Honored. Precious. I love you. I am with you. So do not remember the former things. For I am about to do a new thing. There will be a way in the wilderness. And rivers in the desert. I am doing a new thing. A new thing. Do you not perceive it? I love you. I am with you. Do you not perceive it? I am doing a new thing. And you are mine. Have you ever seen rivers in the desert? Trust me. I have called you by name. I am with you you and you are mine beloved community as we cultivate light together scripture reminds us that god is the light that shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it we all know what darkness feels like so for the next several minutes we're going to cultivate light throughout this time of individual reflection you're invited to lift up prayers to the god of creation who knows us calls us by name and walks with us through fire and now we'll have music play and you're invited to sit and reflect as well as you're invited to lift up prayers. Here comes the sunshine. Here comes the springtime. Here I go again, trying to find the words to say it all.
And as we have embraced light and let go of fear in this third and final movement of our time today, we're going to let go of doubt and cultivate hope. And for this portion of our gathering, we are going to uh, use visual art for a deeper reflection. And we're going to show uh, a video as well as a beautiful artistic piece. We're so blessed to have so much beautiful support from not only Cabin of Love, Julia Bloom, but also from a sacred art, a sanctified art. And so hear these words. This is the gospel according to Luke. Um, this is the 13th chapter, verse 6 through 9. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came looking for fruit and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree. And still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. In Luke's Gospel, Jesus tells a story of a fruitless fig tree, once planted with promise, only to grow barren and brittle. The landowner in the parable has returned to its empty branches for three years. With patience worn thin and hope withered, he commands the gardener to cut it down, seeing it as a liability to the soil. But where the landowner sees waste, the gardener perceives possibility that lies fallow. For the gardener has learned from the land that life flows in cycles, budding, flourishing, pruning, death. And so he requests one more year. Cutting the earth with a shovel, he loosens the clots that have settled like stone, so that when water comes, the earth will receive it like a soft kiss. He blankets the roots with manure, so that growth can be steadied by hope. And then, he lets go. What happens to the fig tree? Does it live? Does it die? Does it bear any fruit? We don't know. And so if we can't read the end of this story, then we must write it with our own lives. Because we know what it feels like to be the fig tree, to be deemed worthless, 
to be weary enough to believe that we don't deserve to be well. And perhaps we also know what it's like to see the world through the eyes of the landowner, calculating worth based on what we produce, what we accomplish, what we provide. Can we cultivate the vision of the great gardener? The one who sees you for what you are becoming? The one who tends and prunes, nourishes and lets go? Perhaps for us, the fruit is not the ending. The fruit is in the waiting in the dead of winter, in the manure, the nurture, the rest, the darkness. The fruit is in all of it, sowing seeds we can't yet see. community, I invite you to gaze upon the finalized image titled, Where the Fruit Lies, by Lizzle Gwynne Garrity on this screen here. Let your eyes rest for a few moments in silence. Take a deep breath in and let it out. Continue breathing deeply as you gaze upon the image. In silence, I invite you to ponder the following questions, continuing to gaze upon the image as you reflect. Which character in this parable do you resonate with the most? The landowner? The gardener? The fig tree? Where is doubt emerging in your life? What does doubt feel like? And how can you work to let it go? And now let us take a brief moment of pause. Beloved community, no matter what you have pondered in this brief time of silence, we offer it all to God as earnest, an earnest, unspoken prayer. It is finished, a shay, and amen. Every winter I think I'm dying Come the spring I feel like trying Trying again In the 
summer I know I'm living Go to fall and all starts giving Giving out gone On and on On and on Chasing down the speed of light Face pressed up to window Staring at my existence Sweet obliteration of all that I think I should be. In the morning, I remember dreams that fade like dying embers, light as dry leaves, leaving left and lost. Chasing down the speed of Pressed up to window, staring at my existence back against the wall of furious insistence. Into your hands, into your hands, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, into your hands, into your hands, into your hands. Friends, beloved people of God, beloved community, hear and receive and believe these words from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I'm about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? God is doing a new thing in you, even if you can't perceive it yet. This is good news. So go out into the world, letting go of anxiety, busyness, fear, doubt, so that something new can be cultivated in you. So, so that you can bear the fruit of light, calm, hope, and confidence in God. God is doing a new thing. May we open our eyes to perceive it. Ashe and amen. Oh